Chris Martin here with FreeFX Tutorials and today what we're going to do is track some footage in Synthize and then get that information over into Cinema 4D. Now we're also going to use the new integration between Cinema 4D and After Effects. We're going to be using After Effects Creative Cloud so we'll get to take a look at how that whole workflow happens. So here's the end result. We've got some footage that was given to us by Artbeats. We want to thank Artbeats for letting us use that. And we've done the track in Synthize. And I'll tell you, I'm using Synthize 2013. It's the new version. And it's pretty awesome. It will actually create a coordinate system and everything for you just by default. So not very difficult to use. Now in some later tutorials, we will go and delve a little bit more into Synthize and how to do some additional features, but we're just going to do the basics today so that we can get through this tutorial in time. So let me get rid of that. First thing I'm going to do is load my footage, which I've already done. You can see here. And then it's as easy as just going over here and hitting the big green auto button. And right here it says create coordinate system automatically after full automatic track and solve. I'm going to say yes. And it's going to do its thing. So it's going to run through the calculations. And it's done. And if we come over here we can see that we have a 0.5 error pixel. It's horizontal pixels. Let's go over here to track, clean up trackers, and let's just, we'll just leave everything and just click on fix. And go ahead and refine, click go. Let's see what we get here. Click OK. 0.51. I'm going to say that's good. Let's go ahead and save this. Replace it. And let's just run through this real quick and we can see that everything looks to be sticking pretty well. I think that's going to be fine. So now I want to go to File, Export, and we're going to choose Cinema 4D which is right there, Cinema 4D Python. So we'll just give it uh, River is what we're going to call it. Save. We'll leave everything at the default. Click OK. And then we need to go ahead and jump over to Cinema. So with Cinema started, I'm going to go to Script, User Script, Run Script, and I need to run over to where my file is and let's see it's going to be synthize river with the PY for Python and there you go so it did all the heavy lifting for us alright now I chose that particular point to attach my 3D model to. So if I come down here and go find that point, let's see where it is, Tracker 30. Let's just pull this up, leave that there so it's easier to work with. And I'm going to come over and look around and see if I can find my slide again. Not exactly sure where that was. So I'll be right back as soon as I find it. Okay, so I found the slide and I went and double clicked. So it's in the scene now. Let me go ahead and scale that down considerably. Do something like that. And I'm going to go ahead and take this and drag this under Tracker 30 and just zero these coordinates out. So we get something like that. 
Maybe go ahead and spin that around a little bit. Move it a little bit. Something like that. Next thing I want to do is grab a plane. Put it underneath here. Zero those coordinates out. We'll go ahead and scale that way down. Something like that. And that's going to be our shadow catcher. Put that right there. Put a material on that. Something like that. All right. Let's go ahead and save this. Next thing I want to do is go ahead and go create physical sky. Drop that in there. Let's just do a quick little render here. All right, so that's looking pretty good. Let's go to the time and location. Let's change this to 11. I think that's what I used before. That looks about right. Next, I want to come over here and right click, go to Cinema 4D Tags, and go to Compositing Tag. Let's click on the Compositing Tag. Select Object Buffer, and I will enable Object Buffer 1. I'm going to come over here to my Render Settings, Multi Pass, and I need to drop a few Multi Pass items in here. One is going to be Object Buffer, so Object Buffer 1, RGBA. I want ambient occlusion in here, and I want a shadow pass. All right, so on able multi pass. Also, want to take the ambient occlusion effect and drop it in here, so that that's taking effect. Let's go ahead and under save. I need to make sure that alpha channel is selected. I think that's about it. Let's do any aliasing. Let's go to best. Let's just do a file save. Do a quick render. And I think that's looking pretty good. So if we drag the timeline here, it looks like everything's staying in place. Do another quick render. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to go into After Effects and we're going to use the new integration tools to cut this out and just leave the shadow pass. And we'll do the rest of the work actually in After Effects. Let's go ahead and open After Effects. Double click here. And this is the new file. We'll import that. Now, again, this is only available if you are using After Effects Creative Cloud. All right. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to drag this into the new comp icon. And you can see we get our scene from Cinema 4D. Now, right now, we are looking at a software render version of that. We can go to a draft version, which is a little better. And finally, we can go to a final, which is even better. It's much slower, but it is the best view you're going to get. So what we need to do here now is we need to enable multi-pass for this Cineware plugin. So if we come down here, we can click on Cinema 4D multi-pass. Click set multi-pass and it's going to be setting multi-pass for this layer. So set multi-pass RGBA image, that's what I want. Click OK. Now I'm going to come down here and I'm going to drag another instance of this 
on top of this layer. So basically, I can call this RGBA and this OBJ1. Now I'm going to go ahead and turn that to final as well. And let me enable the multipass, set multipass, and I'm going to change this to the object buffer. Click OK. And if you're familiar with multipass rendering in Cinema 4D, then this is starting to look kind of familiar to you. So this is the object buffer, which is the cutout. So what we need to do now is go ahead and create a luma mat of that. And you can see it's churning away here. And it's going, it's going, it's going. Okay, so let's see what we didn't do here. Or I should say, let's see what we did wrong. So let's run back over to Cinema 4D. Ah, and this is what we did. We have our shadow pass plane underneath the slide null. So we need to just take this out from underneath there. Okay, so now we took it out of this hierarchy. Then if we do a file save, when we go back into Cinema, everything should be fine. Let's click on there. And this should do a little updating here. And now this should go away. And really you won't be able to see that until we drag the file in here as well. So the video file. There we go. So that looks better. Let's go ahead and drag the video file in here. Click the render, import that. Now, this came in at 30 frames per second. It needs to be 24 because it was 24 in synthize. Let's make sure it's 24 here. Output, see, you gotta watch that because it'll really screw up your track. Click save there. Let's go back over here. And every time you make an update over there, it's going to do this little calculation here. Let's wait for that. And again, we need to come over here as soon as this is done and change this from 30 frames per second to 24 frames per second. So we'll go to interpret footage, main, and just make that change right there. I'll click OK. Great, so we crashed. So I will be back in just one moment. Okay, so we're back. We're back up. And I'm going to take the river sequence and I'm going to drag it underneath here. And this might be a good time to go ahead and change this from full to maybe half or a third just so that we're not waiting on this every time like this. I'm going to change this to a third. And we're still waiting on this. So the next two things that we want to do are add the ambient occlusion and we're going to add the shadow pass. So let's go back here. I'm going to grab another instance of this. I'm going to drag it right there. And I'm going to change this to final again. I'm going to enable the multi-pass change this one to shadow. Click OK. This is all going to turn white. And there's just the shadow underneath it. So we want to take the blending mode and change that to multiply. And you can see this a little bit, but if I turn this on and off, you can see our shadows there. Lastly, I want to take one more of these put that on top. We're going to turn it to final again. Turn on the multi-pass. Set the multi-pass and use the ambient occlusion pass from Cinema 4D. And you can see the ambient occlusion there. Again we will turn on multiply mode. Let's go ahead and turn this back to full. 
A little longer. It's happening. But the nice thing is with this new workflow that we can render directly out of here without having to go back to our 3D app. So it's very convenient. If we see things that need to be changed, we can change it at this point instead of waiting until we've done all our multi-pass rendering in Cinema 4D and getting all those files into After Effects and then realizing that we needed to change something. So this is very convenient. So I'll be right back whenever this is done. Okay, so we're back and here is the final render. And we could go back into Cinema 4D and sort of move this around and get this repositioned and then save and then come back here. But I think you kind of get the general idea. All right. So from here on out, you can just go ahead and make your color corrections and do whatever blurring techniques you're going to use and create something similar to my final piece, which is right here. All right. So I hope you found this tutorial helpful. We basically covered how to do a basic track in Synthize, get that data into Cinema 4D, and use Cinema 4D and the integration between After Effects to create a new track. All right. So I'm Chris Martin with Free Effects Tutorials. I'll see you next time.